As we eagerly await the release of the Crimson Court for Warhammer Underworlds, I thought it'd be fun to take a trip down memory lane today and count down the top 10 Games Workshop Vampire models. Now, this is not going to include the top 10 best kits in the Vampire Counts range for the Osiarch Bone Reapers or the Death Rattle or whatever they're called. This is specifically Vampire models that Games Workshop had released over the years. Memorable mention is going to go to the Vampire team for Blood Bowl because I mean, even though they're technically vampires, I don't know how canon the Vampire Blood Bowl team is, and they just look so ridiculous. I'm also going to do a shout out to the Bloody Reaver, because even though this is not technically a vampire, it is as Warhammer as you can get with a gothic castle on top of a mountain, which sits a top of a graveyard of sunken ships and is powered by dark magic. And this guy, Captain Noctilus, who unfortunately doesn't have a figure to be representing him on the battlefield, so we're just going to have to settle for this amazing John Blanche artwork. Another memorable mention is the vampire Genevieve, who, even though she is a terrific character in the fiction, doesn't have a model for the tabletop, but I think it's a great character. She's a Bretonian. When she has business in the daylight, she puts on these smoked out glasses and is just such a fun character to read about. And I hope they do release a model for her one day. It would be pretty cool to see what they do with it. What up, players? It's Warboss Tay. Today we're counting down the top 10 vampire models. And where else should we start than with the dream team, the classic duo, the Mr. and Mrs. of all vampire counts. It is Vlad and Isabella von Karstein, and I'm talking about their old models. We'll get to the new ones in a little bit, but look at these old models, these metal models. Games Workshop released the uh, Isabella model, you can tell, definitely takes its inspiration from the Bride of Frankenstein, whereas Vlad, to me, looks a little bit like Christopher Lee from Dracula. I mean, just look at this expression. Just add some long hair on him, give him a big goofy sword, and <laughs> have him show enough that uh, von Karstein ring and there you go. I love the clothes they put these models in that they sculpted on them. It just looks so cheesy and universal movie monster. I think the aesthetic that they went with this is just, just cartoony enough and they will always hold a special place in my heart. Vlad and Isabella von Karstein. Number nine on our list is the Sartosan Vampire, and I unboxed him a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't realize it until I'm looking at this picture now. I think those wing accents underneath his cape are his actual bat wings that he folded up and is trying to either hide or just keep tucked in under his cape. If that's so, I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but I think that's a great artistic flair. It's so creative. And when you've got the rest of the model with the, I think he's got like a stake on the right side of his chest, on the opposite side of where his heart is, it's an added narrative thing that whoever was a vampire hunter tried to take him out in his coffin just missed him a couple of inches more to the left and he, he would have been a pile of dust. But great model with a lot of character and story to it. Number nine, the Sartosin Vampire. As we go number eight, we are piercing the veil, the mists of time and memory to find this blood dragon on an abyssal terror. This is a very old model. It's completely made out of metal. I don't know where you can find it other than eBay today, maybe in one of those white collector boxes for Games Workshop. But I mean, this is a beast to put together. You're definitely gonna have to pin it in place, maybe add a little bit of extra plastic putty. It's so weighted on the top. Just imagine all of this metal so top heavy, but what a great model to see represented on the field. One of the first big monsters for the Vampire Counts range, and it really takes the cake. Next on our list, we've got Conrad von Karstein, the black sheep, the wild animal. The savage and feral Conrad was a vampire that Vlad von Karstein had turned, and as soon as he was turned into a vampire, he said, the heck with all this courtly intrigue, manipulating other vampires and uh, cultivating my human subjects so that they can be a constant source of blood. I'm just gonna go out, slice and dice, and drink all the blood I want, and I don't care because I'm a vampire and nobody's gonna stop me. You can see with his raised swords, he cuts a very high silhouette against the other infantry models on the field. It looks taller than other infantry models that were released at the time, and with the high spiked collar on the back of his neck, it also adds to his impressive profile. 
as it swoops down towards the bottom, you can see those flared bats coming out from what looks to be his cloak. And with the accent color of the blue jewels, it's just a great model to paint. It has that classic Bram Stoker's Dracula blood armor, that plate mail armor, and it's just really fun. Next on our list is a character that also came out in metal and then was re-released in fine cast. And the metal, whenever Games Workshop releases a metal model that is so top heavy, it's always tricky to balance and figure out how you're gonna pin the model so that it'll stay glued together. This winged vampire was a sight to behold when you see one fully painted up on the battlefield. It looks great because you could see his right arm is almost completely turned into that bat wing. You see the transition between the gray of the bat and the pale uh, skin color and his hand is gone whereas the left side of his body you see he's still looking like a humanoid. He's got armor, he's holding a weapon, his leg is armored and so you can see it's a transformation. It goes from the vampire to the bat and this is an angle you don't normally see. If you've never seen this figure on the battlefield you might not know that there's a bat that comes up swooping over his shoulder and it's almost just as high as his wing in the front. Almost completely hidden when you look at the model straight on but it's a great artistic touch. Number five on our list we've got five blood dragon knights. The blood dragons were actually a sub faction in the old vampire counts book. You can uh, have your vampires align themselves to one of the different factions like the Lamian, which were predominantly females, the uh, Necrarchs, which were more creepy magic users, and uh, then you had the Blood Dragons, the Von Karsteins, and then you had the Strigoi, which were more savage and animalistic. Each of these factions had their own flavor, characteristics, and qualities that made them interesting. When you see the Blood Dragons, you really see the love that went into each one of these five figures. Unfortunately, if you wanted to field a huge unit of knights, it was practically bank breaking because this kit of five models costs you $100 American. And there's no way to change their armament. So you have a musician, a standard bearer, two guys with lances and a champion in every box of five. I don't think it came with alternate weapons <laughs> that if you wanted to shell out the money to get a unit of 20 of these guys on the field, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to do the uh, swaps for the musician and the uh, standard bearer. At number four, we've got the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord on a zombie dragon. This zombie dragon takes that Abyssal Terror, takes its lunch, kicks it, leaves it in the dirt, and crying because it is so huge and it was one of the first large monsters that Games Workshop had released. I remember the very first monster they released was that forest goblin Arachnorok spider. Everybody wanted it because it was this huge monster suddenly on the battlefield. You have this giant creature of plastic and then when the zombie dragon was released everybody wanted to get it because not only could you have a vampire lord on a flippin zombie dragon you could also have a ghoul king on top of an undead bat. And what is more cool than that? With the options that came included in the kit, you could have your Blood Dragon Lord all armored up with his lance and his shield sitting on this weird, crazy throne saddle and your zombie dragon with the rotting, decaying uh, skin hanging off in tatters. It just looks really, really great on the battlefield. The first time you field it, in front of the other skeletons and the hordes of zombies and ghouls is just a pleasure to behold. At number three, we've got the Coven Throne, which is one of the two options for the Mortis engine. Big kit that came out right around the time the zombie dragon did. We were just glutted. There was so much great sculpts and figures that were released at this time for the vampire counts, all in plastic. And uh, to have the Coven Throne, come out right after the zombie dragon was just gobsmacking and I mean look at this look at this figure you've got big high Lamian uh, mistress vampire with her two ladies in waiting vampires and they're just being held aloft by a spirit host on a giant throne of uh, skulls just amazing amazing sculpt when I bought mine I had built it up to be the mortis engine but as a 
uh, vampire counts painter. I would have loved to paint these three ladies up. You get like three vampire characters for uh, this kit. Just hanging out, lounging, looking so, so beautiful and so deadly. And I love that high hairdo that they're going with. They took that old Bride of Frankenstein <laughs> hair from the old Isabella model. And they said, how do we bring this into the current range and not make it look so nutty? And so this uh, high hairdo wig look is just really, really great on these models. At second place, we've got Lady Neferata. Now she comes in the Mortark kit. This kit will allow you to build one of three special characters, either Queen Neferata here, Manfred von Karstein, or Archon the Black. And since Archon the Black isn't technically a vampire, we're gonna cut him out of this list. That leaves it between Lady Neferata and Manfred von Karstein. To me, Neferata's head and shoulders above Manfred. Look at this hat. She's literally head and shoulders because of this crazy hat. The detail that Games Workshop put into her sculpt really shows, whereas Manfred, you can tell that they might have been resting on their laurels a little bit. They've done big, bald, beefy vampires before, so this was the true challenge. How do you get a spooky, sexy, scary vampire lady in the same sculpt as the uh, with the other two Mortarks, but really make her stand out? And I think they did. The clothes, the skin color, the facial uh, details, everything about this figure is a winner. If I was ever to get my hands on this kit, I would definitely build up Lady Neferata. She takes the cake. The skeleton cake! Well, before we get to number one, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Doing a top 10 list for me is a little different than my normal fare, and uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. So if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and if you're not already, please subscribe and ring my bell. Now we get to the number one best Vampire Counts model ever released by Games Workshop. It's gonna be Vlad Von Karstein. The new, the improved Vlad Von Karstein. They took that Christopher Lee model, they kept the long hair, but they turned it white. They kept his animalistic, savage vampire features and they made him even more batty looking. And finally, they kept the Von Karstein ring and the big sword, which were his hallmarks, and they just toned it down a little bit. They kept the focus on the ring by showing him looking at his hand where that ring is prominently pointing out at the viewer. It just all around is a terrific model. I had so much fun when I got to paint him and I love the way his sculpt really comes together. It pays homage to the old Vlad von Karstein model while doing all the right things to bring it into the more modern era. But Vlad von Karstein couldn't possibly be by himself. No, he needs his lady love, his immortal love by his side. It is Isabella von Karstein sharing the number one spot. Her and her man together once again. They started it off this list and they're going to end this list together. Look at this sculpt. They took that big crazy hair with the ringlets. They took the vampire aesthetic and they added it to her bodice and her shoulders and her skirt and they made her look like a vampire with the bat wing armor pieces but they kept her also looking like a lady of the court a royal queen of the vampires and I think they nailed it everything about this model she kept her uh, chalice of blood I think they gave her a dagger I'm not sure if she had a dagger before but like the armor that they gave her for the legs, the bodice, the shoulder pads, they all really tie together the vampire theme and I love this model so much. It might be quite possibly one of my favorite models that I've ever painted. I would definitely have to check the tapes but she is really up there. Everything from the hard sharp lines of the armor to the soft and frilly uh, undergarments that she's got, the uh, sculpting of her hair, the roses, it all ties together. There's so much contrast between the different textures. Things on this model look soft, they look hard, they look cold, they look warm. The blood contrasted with her skin, her eyes, and her the features of her face and her mouth, her brow. Like, I could go on and on about everything that I love about this model. It is definitely number one on my list. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. We have a Discord. If you'd like to get over there, just jump down below to the description. Link is right there, and we'll see you in the next one. Latest players! What up, players? Gandalf the Grey, up in Dismar. Support Warboss Tay Studios. For now, more than ever.
Hobbiton is in desperate need of heroes. Heroes like Daniel Sprinkle, Scrag Fist, Brad 94H, Pigs, Dicey Guy, Play It Painted, and Logan Swanson.